In this section, we'll have a brief overview of Extended Service Advance, which is also called as XSA. We'll see what it is. And let me warn you, you may not understand this lecture fully, but that's okay because this is expected if you are new to this. But trust me, go through this lecture. You will have vague idea about what it is. And once you go through the whole course, you come back to this lecture and you will be able to understand everything. So that's what I would say. This is a bit complex. And if you are new, you may not understand all the things, but go through this lecture, come back after the course is over and you will make sense of everything which I will be going to speak here. So let's go ahead. Earlier we had extended services, which is now called as extended services classic now because it has been retired since 1.0 SP 11. I think we have extended services advanced option available. Uh, it has a lot of new feature and uh, it is the new tooling mechanism which SAP suggests you must be using. Now main difference I would say is the schema less option here. Earlier in extended services classic we had a option of pointing to a schema. Now we have containers. We don't have schemas. We have schemas under container. So whenever you create a new object we will be creating a lot of projects in this course and you will see whenever I create a new project there will be a new container which will be created and it is called as HDI container. HANA deployment infrastructure. So for each object there will be new HDI which gets created and under that you can create your objects and you will see how it works. So the basic difference I would say is other than all the other features which we have with the uh, extended services advanced XSA. This is the main difference where we used to call object by schema earlier. Now we can directly call Although we will be using schema also in examples you will see, but that is optional. You can directly use the objects or tables directly instead of using the schema here. As you can see schema is mandatory here. You have to put the schema name in extended service classic option also called as catalog approach where we had the schema option here. We have schema less. So remember this schema less. So this is the main difference here. We have containers and these are called HDI containers, HANA deployment infrastructure, and we'll be creating a lot of those. So in SAP HANA, we also have an org and spaces. What it means is you can have a top level hierarchy as a org here as listed here. This is organization, the overall organization which you may have in your company. And then we can have multiple spaces like SAP space, dev space, prod space and things like that. So why spaces are getting used is you can have separate spaces for separate teams. For example, you can have separate space for marketing team, separate space for sales team, separate space for some other team. So this is how you can have a different spaces so they don't interfere with each other's object and you can keep it separated within those spaces. So basically your uh, admin will create all these spaces for uh, individual teams and that can be used later. We will be using dev space throughout our course and you will see we will be selecting it when we are creating new objects. So this brief overview of org and uh, spaces. Obviously you can have different orgs as well created with your admin and you can say this org 2 and then you can have different spaces there as well. So that option is also available. But this is the basic setup of SAP HANA organization and spaces. Now let's come back to XS Classic or X Services Classic and XS A that is XS Advanced. So what happens is as you have already seen this schema based, this uh, container based and earlier we used to use HANA Studio for this. Now we have web ID here and earlier we had HANA repo to store our objects or to maintain the version. Now we have git. Uh, we'll be seeing this later and this is lightweight and this is little heavy, but it has a lot of other advantages and options as well. So as far as dev tools are concerned earlier, we had HANA studio. Uh, now we have web ID, uh, which we'll be using in this course. And we also have business application studio. It is used for cloud and this is for mostly for on-prem and HANA studio is used for on-prem systems. Now, HANA studio is no longer advised because it is deprecated. Now if you have on-prem system use web ID and if you have cloud system use business application studio. So these are the two tools going forward. So you should keep that in mind. And one last thing before we move ahead. Uh, now we have concept of design time and runtime objects. So what we'll be using throughout this course is we'll be creating design time objects. Design time object is nothing but 
I want to create a CDS view or I want to create a calculation view. These are all design time objects. So I will be coding for it and I will save it in a file. Once I build that, you will see what build is. Earlier we used to activate, now we build. So once I build that, it becomes runtime object. What it means is we actually have a physical object in our database. Once that is created, that is called as a runtime object and design time objects are something which I code or which I create with my graphical tool. Once I activate this or build this, it becomes a runtime object in my backend database. That is called as runtime object and it gets created in my HDI container. And you will see all these options when we create it. Uh, you may not understand here what is design time and runtime, but once you start creating, you will understand, okay, this is design time object and this is runtime object. So design time objects are used for moving across systems and uh, runtime objects you create and test it. So if you just create a design time object and don't build this, you won't be having any corresponding runtime object. For example, I, if I create a CDS view or table in design time object, if I don't build this, I won't have a backend table or a table in my database. So it will be useless, but I can transport this. I can't transport runtime objects. So this is the basic difference and design time is basically creating the object and runtime object is basically building it and creating a database object out of it. That is the main difference. Just keep this in mind. This lecture can be a bit confusing, but it's okay. Just keep it with you as we go further, do all the hands on. Then you can come back to this lecture and you will understand in totality what I am talking about. So let's move ahead.